now available. Paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Isis, the main event. It's carnage inside of a steel cage when the goddess next door steps in a squared circle with the beast from the box of this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, the main event. Paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. The wrestling world was shocked when CM Punk returned to the WWE at the Survivor Series pay-per-view last Saturday. Now, CM Punk has not been at a WWE event in close to 10 years, and this was the first time that he stepped into a WWE event and was featured as a part of it. Now, CM Punk has been away from the wrestling world for most of that decade, and in the last two years, he was a part of Tony Khan's AEW, or All Elite Wrestling, and that tenure in AEW was one that was quite tumultuous. Now, CM Punk, when he first started with AEW, or All Elite Wrestling, was the star of the show, and he was given a huge push by AEW owner Tony Khan, who had him go out here and beat all of the top stars in AEW on his road to becoming an AEW champion. And as CM Punk became the AEW champion, this is where there were issues as related to friction between a CM Punk and AEW Executive Vice Presidents Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks, and Hangman Adam Page. And all of those issues came to a head at the All Out 2022 pay-per-view after, I believe, CM Punk defeated MJF or Maxwell Jacob Friedman, one of the top stars in AEW. And after beating their top, top star, CM Punk, and during a media scrum, started speaking bad about the company right in front of Tony Khan's face. And after having that media scrum where he basically disrespected all of AEW's ownership, CM Punk then had a confrontation with the EVPs of Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks, and Hangman Adam Page, who he had issues with as he was going into business for himself during a, an episode of Dynamite. Now, all of this led to a violent altercation in which CM Punk wound up getting severely injured and the Young Bucks and Adam Page got into this fight with him in his locker room and this eventually led to the suspension of the EVPs and also led to CM Punk getting the title of the AEW Championship stripped from him and CM Punk was left into limbo for several months until early 2023 when Tony Khan managed to convince Warner Brothers Discovery to create a new Saturday show called Collision which would feature many of the what they considered to be more difficult AEW stars to work with to be together on one show along with other performers who did not get much screen time like Absolute Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs, this new show, Collision, was supposed to revolve around CM Punk and stars like the FTR and Miro, who were fan favorites, who didn't get much spotlight on AEW's Dynamite. And this show was doing a little well in the beginning until issues with CM Punk started to rise again as CM Punk started to get into it backstage with Jack Perry. Now, as CM Punk started to get into it with Jack Perry, that's what led to the buildup of the confrontation at the All In pay-per-view, which was supposed to be an event that was supposed to show how AEW was global. But what happened was, was CM Punk became the center of the show and his dysfunction became the center of the program. And as they, as CM Punk and Jack Perry had this altercation right in front of Tony Khan, this is where Tony Khan basically said enough was enough and decided to terminate CM Punk's contract after a second altercation between CM Punk and many of the wrestlers at AEW. Now, what I believe is happening here with Triple H is that Triple H basically sees that CM Punk is a draw as related to 
being somebody who can bring money to WWE. However, I don't think he's going to be rolling out the red carpet for CM Punk the way Tony Khan did because Triple H is a businessman who is extremely objective and has his own vision for his business, whereas Tony Khan basically is a guy who is running a wrestling fiefdom where he goes out here and hires wrestlers he likes and gives them everything without expecting them to be a part of his program. That's the, always been the problem with Tony Khan that isn't with Triple H. And I believe that Triple H has a plan for CM Punk, and it's all about making money for himself as related to using CM Punk to sell tickets and PLEs for WWE. And in that role, I believe what's going to happen is CM Punk is not going to be given the huge push that Tony Khan did and put on a fast track to a title. No, what I believe is going to happen is Triple H is basically going to be using CM Punk as celebrity enhancement talent and he's going to have him job to his top stars like Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns and have him job to those stars because this is something that's going to help his bottom line because Yes, people want to see CM Punk, but Triple H is not going to go out here and put CM Punk over most of his top stars who have been working their butts off for the last decade. That's going to be the big difference between Triple H and um, Tony Khan, who basically went out here and acquiesced to CM Punk because he was spellbound and basically saw him from a fan's status, but Triple H basically sees CM Punk from a business perspective, and because he sees him from a business perspective, I'm expecting him to basically be booked very differently than he was at AEW. And the way I see him being booked at WWE for this second run is He's basically going to be one of those guys who was able to beat guys like Austin Theory or some of the guys from the New Day and be put in matches with those kind of guys to build him up. But when it's time to take on the guys at the top of the card, this is where CM Punk is basically going to get jobbed out to Seth Rollins and definitely to Roman because with WWE's... Uh, undisputed world title picture they have basically run out of bodies to throw at Roman Reigns and CM Punk is a body they can throw at Roman Reigns for a quick pay-per-view payday and not have to go out here and try to either take one of their up-and-coming stars like they did with LA Knight which was a major mistake and have him going out here and fighting against Roman Reigns they can go out here and take CM Punk and use him as fodder the way they did with Logan Paul and basically be able to protect Cody Rhodes and have it where he, if he does go out here and win either the Rumble or the Elimination Chamber, he can go out here and win that title clean. And you can also have some nice build up into other matches if Cody does get the title at WrestleMania 40. You can get some build up to a Punk versus Cody match that we could have gotten at AEW had Cody not gone out here and said he wasn't going for the title. And we could, and the whole thing is you've got lots of opponents for uh, Cody if he gets the belt. You can not, you have, you have LA Knight, you have, you have um, Randy Orton, you have Brock Lesnar, you have CM Punk, you have plenty of opponents that can, that can go out here and challenge for the title and, but the whole thing is is that CM Punk basically isn't going to be a main event player no he's going to be more like an upper mid card player and that's where I believe CM Punk is going to realize that he basically screwed up his whole career at AEW by going into his usual paradigm where he's always looking to get his way because Tony Khan, because he was basically an inexperienced simp, basically rolled out the red carpet for CM Punk, put him in the main event, basically had all of his top stars 
job to him and even had Hangman Page be get beat for the title. The, Tony Khan basically gave CM Punk everything, but CM Punk didn't appreciate everything Tony Khan was giving him. And instead, what he did was continue to get into it with all of these other guys who were lower on the card at AEW because he was caught up in his feelings about those guys like Hangman Adam Page, which led to him going into business for himself instead of taking care of his business. And that basically started CM Punk from going to being in a successful run in AEW to starting to head down the road to being run out of AEW. And that's what happened to CM Punk in AEW, but what's going to happen to him in WWE is he's going to be basically used again as celebrity enhancement talent, basically somebody who's going to be there to make Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns look good by defeat being beat by having them defeat what is considered to be one of the great icons of wrestling, and then he'll possibly be jobbed out to L.A. Knight and possibly Cody Rhodes before falling further into the mid-card, where he will possibly wind up getting a few wins from guys like Austin Theory and other guys on the card, and may be sent out here to get the crap beat out of him by Gunther, which is something I would love to see, and he's, he's just going to be out here doing jobs because Triple H is not going to let his stars get uh, pushed back as related to their pushes because of CM Punk. No, he's going to use them him as a draw, have him talk a lot of stuff on the microphone to get people into the feuds. And then as he's out here in the ring, he's going to be booked to lose most of those matches. That's the plan that I believe Triple H has for CM Punk. This go around in WWE, and CM Punk doesn't have that leverage like he did when he was coming out of the Indies and was over as a star around 2009 to 2014, I believe. He doesn't have that, that leverage at all that he had before because one, there's no Vince McMahon here, and two, he's basically coming out of a situation where he was just terminated at AEW. So CM Punk doesn't have that leverage to go out here and say, I am a star, I have a following. No, he knows he's on thin ice with Triple H because this is the last stop for him. And if he messes up here, he's basically done as related to wrestling. And he will possibly, the only place he could go is TNA, which has a smaller audience, or go to NWA, which is even smaller than that. So CM Punk basically knows that he basically punked himself out and is one of the big losers as related to this whole situation. But the biggest loser for this whole situation is AEW owner Tony Khan. Now, Tony Khan is the biggest loser in this whole CM Punk situation because while his company was experiencing growing pains while CM Punk was a part of it, those growing pains have gotten progressively worse over the last couple of months since he terminated CM Punk. Now, after the termination of CM Punk, AEW basically is a company that's like a rudderless ship without a direction, and the big problems over at AEW really aren't the wrestlers who do a fantastic job in the ring. No, the problem is Tony Khan, who basically is he doesn't know anything about the wrestling business and is trying to run it from a fanboy's perspective. And because he tries to run it from a fanboy's perspective, he's not really understanding that American wrestling is different from Japanese wrestling, and he's trying to go out here and apply approaches to wrestling that don't appeal to American audiences. And this is why ratings have basically dropped at AEW since the termination of CM Punk. The ratings have dropped over at AEW because Tony Khan doesn't know how to run the business and the business is running itself. And the business as it's running itself is running Tony Khan around and Tony Khan is being run around by wrestlers who are taking advantage of him 
And as he's doing this, his organization is falling completely apart, and it's falling apart to the point where one of the, the AEW originals, QT Marshall, just resigned. And while a lot of people think QT Marshall's resignation means nothing, QT Marshall was a major part of the backstage, and his reason for leaving AEW has to do with the booking is rumored. And I would have to say, yeah, you would have to leave because the booking has been a mess. And the booking has been a mess because Tony Khan's greatest Achilles heel is that even though he can go out here and sign great talent, Tony Khan cannot tell a story. That is the big difference between Triple H and Tony Khan is that when Triple H signs a talent, he has a vision and a plan for that talent, and he can develop a storyline around that talent that can be entertaining to audiences. Whereas with Tony Khan, he signs talent based on his emotions and the fact that they are available, but he doesn't have a plan to book that talent. Neither do all of his EVPs, Nick and Matt Jackson, and Hangman Adam Page, None of these guys have any way of understanding how to tell a story. Moreover, they don't really understand how to go out here and assess a crowd to see who is over so you can go out here and give the proper talent a push. This is a major problem over at AEW and has been a problem ever since the inception of the organization. The problem is, is that Tony Khan doesn't know how to tell stories, and because he doesn't know how to tell stories, most many of his episodes of Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision have no real direction and have no real focus, and because these shows are just all random matches thrown together, what happens is there's no reason to care about anything because there's absolutely no buildup. And because there is a lack of buildup for the matches as related to story, people have no incentive to watch the shows. And most of the shows basically come off like an old 1980s episode of WWF Wrestling Challenge. And I say WWF Wrestling Challenge because this was the show where the B wrestlers would participate in squash matches. And as the B wrestlers participated in squash matches, we would get no real story broken down to us the way we did on Superstars because Superstars was the A show. And on Superstars, we would get some build towards the stories that were a part of the pay-per-view. But Tony Khan doesn't understand the wrestling business as related to story and because he doesn't understand the wrestling business as related to story many of his wrestlers are frustrated many of his wrestlers are very upset because they got signed for all of this big money but they're not being utilized properly and because they're not being utilized properly what's happening is you've got a lot of wrestlers who are thinking about walking away from their contracts and possibly leaving like Jade Cargill and Cody Rhodes did because they look at this organization and they don't see the leadership, they don't see the direction, and the whole CM Punk situation showed how weak Tony Khan's leadership is because instead of Tony Khan running things as related to that incident in All Out 2022, which led to the all-in disaster, what happened was CM Punk was running things, and when an employee has the audacity to go out here and speak bad right in front of the owner, it shows how little respect they have for him. And I doubt that's going to happen with Triple H, because if CM Punk were to speak against WWE right in front of him, that would be his last chance with WWE right then and there, and they would have shut him down right then and there, something Tony Khan didn't do. And that's why Tony Khan is the big loser, because he's out here, he doesn't understand how to structure stories, he doesn't understand how to structure a business, and this is why CM Punk punked him out, and six months after getting terminated at the All-In, or not even six months, three months after getting terminated at the All-In pay-per-view, 
he's over at WWE, which shows how little respect CM Punk has for Tony Khan. And he's basically, at this point, showing how little respect he has for him because to go to a competitor three about three months after you've lost, after you get fired from a job, doesn't really show that CM Punk is in demand, but it shows how Triple H knows how to play the game of chess. And part of that game of chess isn't just hiring CM Punk, it's basically punking out Tony Khan and AEW by showing how to use an older veteran wrestler and use that older veteran wrestler in a better way than Tony Khan has with much of his talent. I mean, Tony Khan has basically been embarrassed as related to Jade Cargill, who was being built up very nicely on WWE's programming, and with also with Brian Pillman Jr., who, as Lexus King, was packaged far better than what Tony Khan has done when he had that T Brian Pillman Jr., working for him for the past three years. I mean, in two weeks, he had Brian Pillman Jr. having a promo because T Triple H and Shawn Michaels understand you just don't bring in a wrestler cold. No, you got to have an introductory package to introduce the character to the audience. And then you got to let people get to know the character the same way that they did with Scott Hall because when he was working in WCW, he was the diamond stud. But when Vince McMahon got Scott Hall, he gave him a character, Razor Ramon, and then packaged that character in a series of films where we got to see the character and get to know the character before he stepped in the ring. And Tony Khan doesn't do this kind of buildup, and this is why his shows struggle, because he doesn't understand that with American wrestling, American wrestling is about story, and you have to have a story to build where we get to get an introduction to this character. We get to know this character. And as we get to know the character and they start to feud with the established stars, we start to see why we need to care about this character. That's something he doesn't understand. And that's why his shows really struggle because he just goes out here, finds wrestlers he likes like Switchblade, Jay White, Juice Robinson, and just brings them in cold. And because they're brought in cold, we have no reason to care. I mean, yes, people will care about CM Punk because he's a big A-list wrestler, but the problems are that Tony Khan doesn't understand storytelling in the wrestling business. And this is why he got punked at the Survivor Series by Triple H. And I say Triple H because this wasn't CM Punk. CM Punk knows that his days are numbered in the wrestling business. CM Punk knows that this is possibly his last run as a wrestler. CM Punk knows that he's going to be doing a lot of jobs at WWE this run. And CM Punk knows that he's going to be staring up at lights for a lot of big pay-per-view matches. He's going to go from the guy getting the pin to the guy being the one who's looking up at the lights as he hears the referee count one, two, three. This is what's going to happen because, again, Triple H now has the leverage and CM Punk can't get his way because if he rubs people the wrong way this time, he knows that the road for him will not be big paydays with WWE. It will be a run where he's going to be either at TNA Impact or even worse, NWA or the Indies once more. So this is CM Punk's final run, and he understands that if he runs his mouth the wrong way or rubs people the wrong way in WWE, then his career is going to go down one, two, three. Now, if you want to pick up my book, which is a tribute to my love for pro wrestling, Isis the Main Event, you can find that book in paperback and, on, and Kindle Unlimited today. And if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can read Isis the Main Event for free. And if you want to also pick up many of the other books on the SJS Direct imprint, like the other books in the Isis series, the Esteem series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my vampire novel Eternal Night, my men's issues books, or my black sorority novels The Thetas, or a recipe for success, or my, you can find all those books in paperback and Kindle format 
on Amazon.com by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to pick up my first full comic, John Haynes at Death's Door, you can find that comic on Lulu.com as well by clicking a link in the description box. And if you want to see me do more videos about wrestling and wrestling, the wrestling world, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available on paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Hayes, the man with nothing to lose. The man who rules the world runs to the irresistible force of a man with nothing to lose in this action-packed, all-new John Hayes series adventure. It's the regular and variant editions of John Hayes, the man with nothing to lose on Amazon.com today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.